Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the federal courthouse here in, in Baltimore. Uh, this will be the opening of the Environment and Public Works uh, Committee hearing, and I want to thank uh, Senator Boxer and Senator Inhofe, the chairperson and ranking member of the Environment and Public Works Committee, for allowing me uh, to conduct this field hearing for the Environment and Public Works Committee uh, dealing with our construction, renovation, and maintenance of our federal courthouses. I want to acknowledge uh, the staff from the Environment and Public Works Committee that are here, uh, Allison Cook and Kathy Dendrick, William Hennenberg, and Steve Chapman, uh, representing uh, the Environment and Public Works Committee, and Josh Klein of my staff, who is present. Uh, today's hearing will be used by the Environment and Public Works Committee in our responsibility to oversight uh, the federal courthouse uh, construction uh, renovation and maintenance. I want to thank our witnesses for being here uh, from the, the federal agencies as well as those from Baltimore, including our mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake. It's a pleasure to have uh, you, your, honor, your honor here, and thank you for uh, your participation uh, today. The, um, in a May 2010 GAO uh, report, General uh, the Government Accounting Office, noted that in the 33 new courthouses that were constructed at the federal level since 2000, uh, 3.56 million square feet of unauthorized extra space was actually put in service. These facilities um, were uh, both, uh, the report was both critical of the General Services Administration as well as the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts in the manner in which this additional space was put into service. It was based, according to the GAO report, on faulty assumptions. The assumptions were, quite frankly, that all of the vacancies in the federal judiciary would be filled and the space would be needed. Now, I can tell you, serving in the United States Senate, that's not necessarily realistic assumptions, uh, knowing that there are intentionally times where uh, uh, court uh, positions are held uh, un unfilled. The cost of this unauthorized extra space amounted to $135 million of construction cost and $51 million to operate and to maintain. So, starting in 2004, the Administrative Office of the Court initiated some reforms in order to try to deal with some of these cost issues. And at that time, they put priority on the space needs more so than on the security or condition of the building. And I'm going to come back to that point, because the two points I want to make from the beginning on dealing with the uh, 2004, uh, dealing with the uh, uh, May 2010 GAO report, is one that it was expensive. This taxpayers' money was spent that could have been spent in a more cost-efficient way. And secondly, it added to, I think, the wrong conclusion. The wrong conclusion being that we should put space needs ahead of adequate needs for our federal bench. Uh, and I, we're going to need to have to deal with that. I, I want to thank all of those who are at the Edward M. Garmatz Federal Building Courthouse for allowing us to use this site for this field hearing. I particularly want to acknowledge Felicia Cannon, who's worked very closely with us uh, in regards to uh, the use of this courthouse. Uh, this courthouse was constructed in 1976, and it has the dubious distinction of being the cheapest square foot facility uh, constructed uh, of its type. I say that without much pride because as you travel through this building, you'll see the deficiencies in this building. From day one, there have been legitimate criticisms as to the adequacy of the federal courthouse here in Baltimore. It has a poor relationship to the city itself. By that I mean is that when you design a building that's in an urban center, it should be part of the, of the city. Instead, this building was designed sort of as a an island to itself and not incorporated well into the plans of Baltimore City. Secondly, uh, from day one, there was poor, poor acoustics, poor lighting, an awkward courthouse layouts, 
electrical system failures, the location of the holding cells is not where it should be, the location of the galleries for, is not where it should be. It's an environmental nightmare when you take a look at its energy consumptions. And since uh, 1998, there have been 11 published reports of problems dealing with the HVAC, plumbing, and the electrical system. The safety of the building's design has also been called into question. It's similar to the federal building that was constructed in Oklahoma City that was the subject of so much uh, devastation as a result of an explosion. There is concern about blast concerns. If you get a blast, whether this building could in fact deal with those type of issues. The GSA report in 2003, and I'm going to quote from it, said that our first impression report that describes the appearance of the Baltimore Federal Courthouse as, quote, anonymous and unrelenting, with no identification of interior functions, not benefiting, befitting the dignity of a courthouse, all helped to elevate the Baltimore Courthouse to the number one spot on the administrative office of the court's five-year courthouse plan for replacement. That uh, five-year plan, which was done in the early, uh, around 2006, uh, listed Baltimore for construction by 2008. And the reason Baltimore was listed number one is for these reasons. There were security issues as to whether the building was uh, designed in a way that would provide the safety, not just of the judges and the uh, staff, but the public who visit and use the federal courthouse. There was also a concern as to whether this, the, root, the, the, the rooms were organized in an efficient way for the purposes of a federal courthouse. But once Baltimore reached the, the top of the list, the rules changed. First, there was not enough money to start construction. So there was nothing being built during those years. And there was a moratorium on new construction. So Baltimore stayed number one for a few years, but there was no activity at all done. Then they, the criteria used for what courthouses should be built was changed. As I, made it, uh, as I noted earlier, uh, the, there was a change in focus from dealing with having adequate space from the point of view of safety and design to whether there was sufficient space and square footage. And when that was done, the Baltimore Courthouse uh, uh, lost its preferred position and went from number one to not being on the list at all for new construction. But Baltimore was in the worst possible position. During those years where it was felt that we were going to get a new courthouse here in Baltimore, the maintenance work was not done. The improvements were not done. Why put money into a building that was going to be replaced? So the conditions that existed here became even worse. And no money was spent to really keep the building up to where it should have been. So Baltimore lost its position to get a new courthouse, and Baltimore's courthouse became even in worse condition. It was clear that Baltimore, it's clear to me that Baltimore deserves a courthouse befitting the dignity of the federal judiciary. Now, we have, I don't know if, if, if Josh has been showing you the, the pictures behind me, maybe it would be a good time to show some of, these, some of these photographs that will show you the condition of some of the courtrooms here in the Baltimore Courthouse. Uh, for those who are familiar with federal courthouses, these are not the type of rooms that I think most federal judges would consider to be adequate. We've also had significant water damage because of uh, problems with uh, pipe leakage here that has caused some of the rooms not to be able to be used. The most recent was just a few months ago, uh, which caused a major problem. It's my understanding now uh, that uh, the, uh, there's a requirement to check all the lavatories before you leave to make sure they're set on the right setting or another flood, in fact, could occur. So there's a problem here. There's courthouse, courtrooms that can't be used because of their design failure. There's heating and air conditioning issues, there's flooding issues, uh, and there is just the concern of safety in the way that this building was designed uh, and uh, the need to either upgrade it through blast protection improvements, which would be very expensive, uh, or to consider a new courthouse. Now, I, I think that safety issues should come first, not last. And I think dignified space should be a requirement for our federal bench. 
I believe we need a new courthouse here in Baltimore. And I have strongly stated that uh, in, in every forum that I can. But we cannot continue to allow this courthouse to remain in its current condition. Uh, that needs to be addressed. And I hope our witnesses will be able to help us understand how we got to where we are today here in Baltimore, and more importantly around the nation, and what we can do to make sure that the public has adequate courthouse space in order for the federal judiciary to be able to perform its, its critical function uh, for, our, for our government. 